watching that movie, and I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, for some of you, that was the first time seeing the director's cut. It had some extra footage in there um, that was not in the YouTube version. And I just want to thank you all for being amazing, lovely people who came out to see this tonight. Thanks so much. Woo! Yeah, is there anything, like, I'm happy to field any question if anyone uh, has any. Um, I could, I could do that, or I could, uh, you know, I could say what I'm doing right now is that uh, I mentioned the Free Agents Radio News Program, which was a five-minute news segment that covered uh, what's going on in the world of peaceful resistance. Well, I've continued doing that. Uh, Free Agents is no longer around, but I uh, started a new thing called Peace News Now, and I urge you to go check it out if you've got iTunes or whatever um, you do for podcasts. Subscribe to Peace News Now. It's a five-minute daily uh, video and audio. You can have it either way you like. And it covers what's going on in the world of peaceful resistance. So if you've got enough of, like, oh my gosh, they're raiding Massachusetts, and now California too, and like you don't want that bad news, uh, you can have a little five-minute break from that. And uh, check that out at peacenewsnow.com. Yeah, thanks so much. Oh, hey. Are you doing any media related to Bitcoin? Oh yeah, actually, thanks for asking. I I think Bitcoin like is one of the best things that people can do uh, for freedom uh, because this obviously came with a really heavy cost and um, you know so much for accomplishment. It's it's who knows you know it's up to interpretation. It's a piece of art, whatever you know you can take what you want from it. But yeah, Bitcoin actually it, it makes a physical difference in the world uh, because the. the need the Federal Reserve notes to keep circulating, uh, they really depend on, on that for their wars and for their welfare state, and they really can't have any of that if people trade in alternative currencies. So if you haven't heard of Bitcoin, I urge you to check out weusecoins.com. Um, it's the best non-commercial place to learn about. Hey, everyone here knows about Bitcoins. It's great. <laughs> hey. All right, so I have a question for you guys. Um, if you guys believe in self-government and volunteering, how exactly do you guys plan on protecting myself and my family from something that wishes to do us harm? Yeah, that's a serious question. Uh, so if I uh, make sure I heard it and understand it properly, um, you're asking sort of like a group question almost. Uh, so for anyone who has you know, a response to this, um, you feel uh, endangered um, by you know some, some dangerous people. Um, you know, just the recent attacks in Boston, I guess I just said that I don't feel 100% safe with a terrorist in our backyard or that's wishing to do me harm. So I understand what you guys are trying to do with the free yeah. speech, and I respect that. But when it comes for me, um, like, do you guys have, I understand that you guys do bunk, that you would want somebody to volunteer. But are any of you guys really willing to volunteer to go into the line of fire if somebody's trying to attack you? I've been, I've been knocked out of the game. No, 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 that was a tag team. No, 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 oh, that okay. was a friendly I thought we were a tag team. Hey, how are you doing, Dave? Hey, all right. Yeah. Sounds like Liz has something to oh, say to that. I mean, do you want to respond first? Well, my, well, I heard you say, the, I think I heard you say the words, um, I don't feel 100% safe. And neither do I. And I don't think that exists. Uh, it does in prison. When I was in jail, I was 100% safe. Oh. Nothing was going to happen to me. You but should. that's not the world I want to live in. So, you know, I'll take risks. Uh, I'll, I'll take not 100% safe. Uh, but you are willing to like, live without a police force protecting you? Hmm? You guys are willing to live without a police force protecting you? Probably. Well, I didn't feel protected. If you saw the movie... Oh, I mean, no, I'm not saying about your freedom of speech. I'm talking about more things that are like something wishing to do me physical harm. Yeah. You guys, are, you guys don't think that nobody... I mean... Well, it doesn't need to be a person... It doesn't need to be a cop to stop a uh, bad guy. For example, uh, this just happened last week where a um, man was running around robbing uh, stores for Oxycontin, and it happened to be a regular Joe who had a gun on him stopped him and said, you know, can you drop that? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was a regular Joe who stopped the crime. And the same thing happened in Boston. It was a regular Joe who solved the crime there. I mean, But he called in. He didn't physically go out there and stopped. arrest the guy or stop him or throw him. Because there are not a lot of guns in Boston. Sure. Okay, so, so, take the floor. so my first, first thing I want to say is that the, all of this stuff that happens, the Boston bombing, everything, that happened even though we already have that the police thing and the apparatus. So everything, all of the danger that we live with now is in spite of the current system. Um, and this 
second thing I would say is that violence in general, so much of it is caused by the state and state programs. And I don't just mean like kidnapping by police officers, I mean like the drug war creates so much crime because um, it, it creates a black market and, um, and people, drug dealers can't resolve their commercial issues in court or anything like that, their contracts won't be enforced. So they have to solve their problems with violence. Um, and also, once you get into the habit of breaking the law, it's hard to, <laughs> you, you become part of that underworld. So, and I don't, I, I'm not following you with it. <laughs> well, I don't, even, I don't even think of it as disobeying the law. It's, yeah. it's really, obeying, yeah. it's obeying the law. It's obeying the real law. Yeah. Well, what about and things like, like the, rape or domestic right. violence or child abuse? They, How do you, right. I mean, Child abuse, you don't necessarily need, um, I don't think necessarily the police force would help, but I think there's certain organizations like CASA and, and yeah. other court system that help out a child. And, yeah. But what about, um, especially like domestic abuse, I mean, how? Yeah, I mean, right. Well, I mean, the, the police right now can't and aren't stopping domestic abuse. So, and I'm not saying that, I mean, there are a lot of ideas about voluntary replacements for police protection. Um, you know, agencies where you can have, like, uh, your community can pitch in for, like, a security guard who, um, who you can call if there's, like, somebody in your backyard or whatever like that. Um, but I, I do want to, I do think that so much of that violence is, is caused by the state and a lot of theft is because, I mean, people can't make um, money in the way the economy is regulated, and so they turn to other means. Um, but there are there are lots of answers to what would we do without a police force, and I'd be happy to talk to you. And more. also, what do you guys think about with uh, sorry? What do you guys think about with uh, crimes that aren't necessarily uh, violent? What about crimes like embezzlement or fraud or right. even harassment? Right. Well, fraud is a form of theft, so. Um, and if you tell me that like this, um, that you're going to do something and then don't do it, and I've already given you something, like that's breaking the contract and that's stealing. So those are also, I mean, we regard those as people violating other people's rights, which is, um, which is the problem, right? But like that, that's, that isn't the victimless crime. Um, so there, again, there are lots of ideas for voluntary ways to enforce contracts, um, private arbitration systems, and things like that. Um, your friend. Yeah, I, I don't know what's on your mind. Yeah. You're a passionate <laughs> She bought domestic violence. I work at the YWCA. If you don't know what that is, we work with victims of domestic violence. We have support and guidance. And like, I know that you've just experienced some crappy cops and I know from firsthand there are crappy cops out there. I know that there are some crappy judges. But at the same time, some of these women that I see, if it wasn't for restraining orders and the judges <coughs> pursuing them to like get those restraining orders and to keep them safe, I could, it, would, it, would, it, would, it would have to be a lot of stuff to convince me to make sure that those women, or just people in general, that would be absolutely safe without any police, governments, and Thank everything. Thank you for the work you do. Right, yes. <laughs> Um, like Caitlin uh, really wants to say something. Um, I think what you're pointing out is certain people helping other people, which can happen anywhere. Um, hopefully, uh, I mean, what I found here in the area is a large community that is very dedicated to protecting each other, supporting each other, helping each other grow. And sometimes that is in the case of, I mean, if I was feeling threatened at home, I would have a whole list of people that I would call, not the police. That would be able to help me if I have neighbors in front of each other screaming and like screaming. I can also do that in my thinking it was but not the cops. And I think you're talking about good cops and good judges, which can happen, but there's also way more good people who don't have that power and it could give it to them by the state, which the wars, the wars, et cetera, is more bad. So yeah, people aren't, those, those women are not safe now. 
like restraining orders don't work a lot of times, um, as I'm sure you know. Um, that sort of it, it depends on exactly how violent the aggressor is in that situation, and for a really violent person, um, a domestic abuser, like they're not going to let a piece of paper get in their way. Um, obviously, I advocate uh, the people arming themselves, but in the case of domestic abuse, it's really unlikely that you're going to shoot, you know, your husband or whoever. Um, but it's it's rampant in this country and in the world, and it happens a lot more than um, most people realize. And we have the police, you know, we have these organizations, and it's still happening. So I think that that's something really important to keep in mind. We're not comparing a voluntary society of, you know, whatever might happen versus a perfect society with the government. That our society is so far from perfect now. So anything, any improvement that we can make in people's quality of life, safety, and increasing their options, um, including the right to self-defense, is going to make a positive difference. What's up, Monica? Um, to answer the question, uh, there's one thing, a solution for that, for you. Okay. Votini. Um, communities can come together and create an idea for their own protection. We actually already have that, where they're like citizen cops, you know, people like uh, Neighborhood Watch. Neighborhood think. Watch, yeah, thanks. Um, but that's one solution, because there are people out there who are trained <coughs> to do these things, and then they either retire or they get out of business for whatever reason, and maybe you want them to do the protecting. A community can come together and decide these things. So there are alternatives to having a top-down thing and having a bottom-up thing instead. So yeah, if that helps. <laughs> I think it's also important to note that we, we do live in a system right now that has currently become a lot of people are dependent on these services. But if Market Basket were to close tomorrow, people aren't going to stop eating. You're, you're going to find a way to survive. <laughs> Me so too. A lot of people have become dependent on social services, and I've grown up working with the nonprofits. I've worked with the Health and Human Services. I've worked with the Boys and Girls Club for a year, the Department of Education, all of it around child abuse and domestic violence. The amount of cases that the police don't solve because there's not enough evidence, and all those is more than ones that they are able to fix. What about people that are trying to do the investigation? I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure that without the police officers doing the investigation on uh, cases of abuse or domestic violence or even terrorism at this point, um, who are, like, people, or do you guys have an idea that there'd be people in place voluntarily doing the investigation? And, I mean, because the people that were caught in the terrorist act were caught by security cameras, but it seems like you guys are very much against security cameras. No. Or I know I understand. Like, you guys don't like with like security cameras being on like a toll booths or being. There, there are security cameras at the Keen Actor Center that was on the film. Oh. Okay. Um, uh, private investigators have a much better track record of solving crimes or any anything like that than cops have ever been. Cops are terrible at it. Yes. I, I, yeah, and, and way way the behavior. I had a bike stolen when I was 12. It's a bike. Never saw that bike again. It's if I had, if I uh, hire a private uh, investigator, I'll take you anything he would find. Well, my house was broken into. They told me it was an expedient to investigate. They just didn't want to take the time to find out who stole it. They're, they're busy going after on the uh, terrorist crimes. Like mm -hmm. on the terrorist, you're talking about a lot of things on that level. Not that I'm in any way justifying the behavior of what happened in Boston. But what they were protesting is the same government that we're talking about because the actions that our government that is acting not on my behalf is killing people in Afghanistan, Iraq, all over the Middle East and all over the world between drone attacks and other forces that I don't support. But that is what they were protesting. Their, their acts in no way were any way a good thing or justified. But if we didn't have a government that was attacking half the world for the same that we're, we're doing it for the greater good, would these terrorist acts be happening at the rate they're doing if there was nothing to protest? Exactly. I still believe that people, there's still many people out there tonight where there's people with the mental Yeah, there always will be. Yeah. 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 
No system is perfect. But I mean, what I'm just saying is maybe don't mistakes. give them so much of a reason. Oh, no, I understand that. We I mean, killed 17 innocent children just three weeks ago, and that barely made the news. I thought it was everything that in Syria. There we go. Just saying, sorry. But, but, uh, but the, the, who, who are also being harmed by the U.S.? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so what my hope is that hopefully by taking personal responsibility we can get away from at least institutionalized violence. Because I'm with you, there's always going to be some bad guy out there doing crazy violence. But let's at least look at the institutional violence. That so we you're talking more today. that you want, I, I mean, personally for me, I'm not uh, I'm a proponent of working, instead of putting people in jail, we need to do more mental health situation where there needs to be more of a outpatient procedure, there needs to be more uh, facilities like that. So personally, that's just where yeah, I stand. I, I, think agree that, agree. I don't think that's the prison right. people is right 100% of the time. There is other options for help for people. In most cases, yeah. unless they're violent, it doesn't help anyone. It doesn't yeah. help the taxpayers, it doesn't help the victims, it doesn't help mm -hmm. the perpetrator. Yeah, I think most libertarians would agree that, you know, if some people are overtly violent, that they do need to be moved. Yeah, there's nothing else you do You need to restrain them in some way. However, that would be, I might not have the answer for it, but with the bottom-up approach is that not no one person has to have the answer. Uh, there can be many answers there, and then you can, you can choose for yourself which is best. And that's sort of what we did with the Free State Project. By choosing New Hampshire to move here, as we chose for ourselves, we voted with our feet rather than relying on other people. Because we felt this was best. You really want to come to New Hampshire? You guys like really get like freezing cold, like. I'm from Florida, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crazy. I've lived here my whole life, and I love New Hampshire. And I, I really, I mean, they Amazon was talking about putting a tax on, and I was just like heartbroken because I go to Amazon for a lot of stuff. Yeah. But well, they, they're voting to ban that. First, yeah, I'm hoping that they do because I, I mean, I'm a big proponent of the free or die and not putting sales tax and not having a certain tax that's been on upon myself, but at the same time. My question to you is, is we have this huge state where we pay about half of everything we make to some form of government, like yeah. local, federal, state, and we still have all these problems. At, at what level will all these problems disappear? How much more government do you want to solve them? I don't know how much more government. I can't honestly answer that yeah. for you. I, 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 don't, I, think, I don't think any more government is going to solve them. But I think, it, don't you think like social services though? Do you believe that social services? Your friend is doing it. Yeah, I, I do. I know, but I mean, like, if you you know, it does help. She's, she's doing it. She, she, you know, you don't have to worry because there's but people it's, like it's social services that are run by the government. Like, you have child protection agencies and you know women protection agencies and just protection agencies in general that are helping out. What about like food stamps? I mean, are you guys saying that if you don't? Don't well, you about how much more money you would have to donate to charity if you didn't have to pay forty percent of your money in taxes? So people could donate to private charities, their own social services, the food banks, the health. You know, people would donate though. I think more people would just keep their money. I think people are. I think people are just naturally they want to uh, keep their money. Before the last 50 or 60 years, people just weren't dying in the street. It just didn't happen. That's a myth created by the government to make you think that if you don't give them the money, people are just going to die in the street. There were in the 1890s. Yeah. They had whole towns for charity that they had people come in and learn skills, go all privately run, so that they could get jobs and get back out in the workforce. It wasn't publicly done. They have those private towns set up. So I mean, charity will be there if people are prosperous enough to donate to that charity. We need the freedom to make them prosperous enough so we can have good private charity. So you're saying that you should have a choice to donate your money to? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Most efficiently. Yeah. Uh, if there's a program that you know a lot of people think is you know very beneficial, and I might not agree with it for whatever reason, you know, uh, I don't feel I should be compelled to pay for it. I would also like to offer the option of what's called uh, mutual aid societies. And actually, my grandfather told me about this. When his grandfather moved to this country from Italy, he got together with all the other Italians. They called themselves paisans. And they chipped in. And they took care of each other. They sent uh, the, smartest, the two smartest kids, one to law school, the other to uh, medical school, so that they could take care of themselves. Look, if your friend was starving, would you not let them be? <laughs> but yeah, but everybody's gonna have friends. There's gonna be people. But the churches have always been. There's always been something in society that, if I walk down the street, even in Manchester, we have people that are homeless. I once a week in, in the spring and summertime. I should do it more often. I will go down to Cesario's and I have a few homeless friends I met through the Occupy program, and I sit there, I buy them dinner, and we hang out. Yeah. And it is just. But the thing is, when you have a system that's gonna provide for it, if they're all getting food stamps, why am I gonna bother? Right. Yeah, I've heard from countless people, why should I donate to the to 
to any of these charities, that's what my taxes are for. I have heard that all over the place, and I think that that's um, disgusting, honestly, because you can't expect them to be solving the problems. You can look around and see they're not solving the problems. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of compassion out there, and without this excuse, well, you know, the government's going to take care of them for me. People will be. The people who are already generous will be able to afford to be more generous, and the people who are making excuses for themselves won't have those excuses anymore. They can really bring a lot of uh, accountability and innovation to trying to address these social problems, whereas the current system doesn't allow for really a lot of change. Um, with pri more private organizations involved, they could adapt more quickly. They're not uh, tied up with the level of bureaucracy. So it could bring a lot of innovation to, to helping people. That's really something exciting, I find. Yeah, I mean, if you think of what's happened in the past 15 to 20 years with technology and the internet, I mean, the world is profoundly different today than it was. We have social media. The internet has spun off all these businesses. And all that was because people were ready to look at new ways of doing things and experimenting market design. And if you do that with ideas of freedom, I think all these solutions will end up being tried and the good ones will rise and be examples. I don't know, just, I, I, I hesitate to agree with you on that just because I feel, I mean, like you said about the criminals, there's just going to still be bad blood. I mean, even if you have accountability, it's just not, I mean, I think, yes, people who still donate to charity, I donate to charity, I work for charities. I, I mean, I'm the community service outreach person here at school. I do charity work all the time. But at the same time, I see, you know, there's, you know, you have people that are living in very expensive mansions and houses that they, they, they need, they, they, they cut their money, they just build a bigger house. They're not going to, I mean. What's wrong with that? They're employing <laughs> people by having that. I don't know, but at the same time, I don't know that they're going to donate either. I mean, just, I don't know, I, I hesitate to agree so, with so you guys. Take, so you'd rather know. take the money by force? Yeah. Or, I, that's why I love people. I hear you on that, and it, it really, it does make me mad when I see, like, greedy rich people. I'm like, you are a penny but you're a millionaire. What the hell is wrong with you? But that's their right, you know, and I don't have any right to tell them how to spend their money. It's, it's the bottom line. I mean, you, would you agree with that? In a way, to an extent, I think that people have a right to decide, but at the same time, I think there's certain services that the government needs to provide. Yeah, I just use my mouth and just say like, you're a scumbag. <laughs> like, you should give to charity, you millionaire. What's wrong with you? You know, like, that's a peep. It may not be a nice thing to say. Uh, there are better ways to say it, but it's at least it's not using violence, you know? You said there are some services you think the government should provide, and there is a libertarian version of that. It's called minarchy, uh, in which only like the bare essentials are there. Mm -hmm. You've never been in market basket, the person in front of you is using food stamps to buy a steak that you can't afford because you can put your work and all they provide for the food right, stamps. Right, exactly. Like the system is broken. And oh no, I feel the system is yeah. broken. I, I mean, I agree 100% on that. I, I've seen it with my own family members, but. Uh, but the government has no creation, no desire to fix that. It's uh, when I was at UMass Lowell, they, uh, the governor, Paul Patrick, actually sent uh, teams there to try to get people to sign up for food stamps because you're a college student and not working, even though you're on a meal plan, you still qualify for food stamps. And they're trying to get people more dependent on these programs, so you're more dependent on the state and need the state, and people don't realize that there really is no need for them. Programs like AmeriCorps and everything, though, they encourage them to have food stamps because you make so little. I did, I just completed a year of My roommate's well, right now. So. And I thought that was interesting. Yeah. I, I'm not, that's not your side, I just thought. Whether you need it or not, though, they encourage you to get on it. Yeah. But see, at the same time, I see both sides. My family was not food stamps. We're, my family's immigrants from Greece. So we had nothing, like, my had nothing. So for a time, it helped us. And then now I I see everyone's point about food stamps. At the same time, I see my brother, who has to take care of himself six times full time. And the only money he can get is from the government because he's not allowed mother hours because he's a man in New Hampshire. And I find that really unfair. Would he even be able though to there's no mom in the have to pay taxes, though? Would he be able to afford food if he wasn't paying 40% of his wages to the taxes? Or is he working? He, he can't work. Oh, this okay. is 24-hour care of his son. He can't work at all. Because you know what? My mom can't do responsibility. I'm in college and there's no mom in the picture. So it's all he has to rely on. So at the same time, I feel the same way. I get a lot of my money taken out of my paycheck. But then 
I see it going to him, but then again, I could just give it to him myself. All right. Yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> sorry, like, all I'm not going to take him, and he wouldn't have to take, yeah. Yeah, take out the middle man. And it wouldn't go to Wars as well as Ken. Woo! Just him. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a group, uh, Shire Sharon, that some people here were affiliated with. Absolutely. 260 people. Just out loud. Yeah, a group that a lot of people are associated with. How many families did they feed? 260. Yes. Which one? Yeah. And this is Shire, Shire Sharon, and it's completely privately funded, no state money. And no state money. It's all private. Oh, and Robin Hood. Yep. The king. That's so cool. So I just feel like this, this is great having a conversation. I, I should uh, mention that I, I'll be continuing this conversation over at the bar if anyone's interested. <laughs> No, really, I'm not like, I'm not, like, I don't want to break this up. If you guys want to keep having a conversation, great, here. Let's do it while dancing. I won't, I won't force anyone away, but I have, doesn't anyone want to go out dancing? Which I do. Like, talk about liberty. In a, uh, before, before we all go, I do have lots of free stuff over here. So. And there's free stuff. So don't miss the free stuff. Yeah. On the way to Murphy's, is that what you said? Is that a good place to go?